Welcome back to another UNC Tar Heels football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me as she always does when we talk Carolina football recruiting is our very own director of football recruiting, Miss Dina King. And she's also the publisher of ncpreps.com, which is also part of our rivals.com network. So Dina is a very busy person these days, especially with the dead period ending in just a few days. First time kids and coaches can see each other face to face in 15 months. It's an exciting yet busy time. And Dina has been getting all of our subscribers up to date on what to look for from the class of 2022 and Carolina as June 1st is almost here. We're gonna continue that series today as we discuss the linebackers. We've already talked about the core, uh, the running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, offensive line, defensive line. If you're on our channel, you can scroll down and see those videos. If you're a subscriber to our site, you've already read that stuff. If not, go ahead and go over to Tar Heel Illustrator for just $8.33 a month. You can access everything Dina has to say about and write about uh, UNC football recruiting, David Sisk about basketball recruiting, and it's going to explode here in a couple of days. Okay, Dina, the linebackers, there are five kids that we're going to, we're really going to talk about four. We're going to hit on Malachi Hammock very quickly. He is one of four committed prospects in the class of 2022 to North Carolina. Four-star kid out of Shelby. You were at his announcement. Okay, we're going to move on to the other four. We believe oh, and that he's the only in-state kid. And he's so the only in-state kid. Well, we've got four linebackers we're going to talk about in this podcast. Two happen to be in-state. We're going to go outside the state first. Mac Brown has told us many times they will go outside the footprint for the great ones. Well, Sebastian Cheeks, a four-star uh, linebacker out of Evanston, Illinois, which is in the backyard of Northwestern. A six foot two, 210 pounds, the number 109 prospect nationally in the class of 2022, and he's number 12 in his position. So what's up with Sebastian Cheeks and Carolina? First of all, it's kind of interesting. A, a kid that Carolina's recruiting is from Chicago. How many, how many times has that ever happened? Not often. <laughs> so, they do uh, have Ray Vahasek, though. Ray Vahasek's from that yeah. area. But he was a JC guy. I know a Turner who played tight end for a couple of years, but transferred, I think, to JMU. He's also from the Chicago area, but – it's been a while since they've gotten a four-star kid or even gone after a four-star kid from that area. And he's he's got two teams that he's really wanting to visit way away from the, the Chicago area, North Carolina and Texas. He's supposed to come on an official visit to UNC that this first weekend in June. So uh, he wants to check out the, the scenery at Chapel Hill, meet the coaches and meet Tommy Thigpen, who's really big in his recruitment, and as always, the Hall of Famer, Matt Brown. And then the next week, he's supposed to go to Austin and uh, meet with the Longhorn staff, the, the new staff there at Texas. And uh, I think he's just wanting to venture out it and get out of that Midwest for a little bit and check out some schools that he's never been around. I mean, you mentioned it before, he's up there in, in close to Northwestern. Uh, Notre Dame is a big school that's uh, – he's a big target for, for Notre Dame, and he's been on campus there and at Northwestern and, and a few of the other Big Ten schools. But uh, just a really – positive vibe about Sebastian he he likes UNC the, the the style they play so it's going to be interesting to see a Chicago kid on uh the Chapel Hill campus right now there are five middle linebackers with Condre Jackson transferring to Georgia Southern there are five middle linebackers one of whom is Jeremiah Gemmel he'll be off to the NFL more likely next year Max says he's an NFL guy so uh, this time next year he'll be trying to to get a job, trying to win a job at a camp somewhere. So that leaves four, and one of them is Eugene Asante. So let's look at the younger group. You've got Ra Ra, you got Power Eccles, and you've got Cedric Gray. Where would he slot in with that group? How would he fit in with what Carolina would have by the time he arrives? Because Asante, well, I guess, will probably be gone by then. Yeah, he's uh, – they're recruiting him as outside linebacker, so – 
you know, I don't – who knows? I mean, the kids, when they get, get them on campus, Bateman likes to move everybody around, but he's definitely outside linebacker. He's got a lot of, lot of speed, and he can cover a lot of ground. So, I, I think he would fit in really well with that – that linebacker group is is possibly one of the most athletic groups on campus. Just you know, with with the type of talent they're bringing in now. Deuce uh, Deuce Caldwell, excuse me, is a three star linebacker from Malden, South Carolina. He's the other out of state kid that we're going to talk about. The last two are in state kids. Uh, you actually just got a tidbit right before we did this podcast on. Deuce Caldwell. So catch everybody up uh, with the latest with him and also where things stand with Caldwell and Carolina. I was doing my, my, it, it seems like I'm always re- doing research now. You know, I thought I graduated college a long time ago, but I, I still have to, to do my research. But yeah, I, I kind of stumbled across that even though he plays safety def- in defensive back at, there at Malden High School, Carolina lots him at linebacker, and like I said, with uh, with uh, Cheeks Bateman loves versatility, and uh, if he's got dudes out there that can play, he's gonna put them out there. So uh, it's a little bit of, you know, he has the DB skills, coverage, and everything, and then he must have outstanding tackling ability to uh, be considered. Uh, a linebacker for this system. So, and he, and he's also a teammate of four-star cornerback, Jaden Lucas, who the Tar Heels are really after as well. And we'll talk about him in a later podcast. I think Deuce Caldwell being recruited as a linebacker is another example that they just want flat out speed at that position. You got to be able to hit obviously, but your linebackers are, they're sculpted a little differently now than they were 35 years ago, and they want guys that go sideline to sideline effortlessly. And a Caldwell being a DB type of athlete in that spot, I think, just furthers what we've uh, been seeing from Jay Bateman's preferences. Uh, Xavier Simmons is another well, athlete. Let, let, let me go oh, okay. there. He he's supposed to take an official visit on June 15th, so he is he is really up there on on UNC and you look at his offer list and nothing, nothing disrespectful. But if you look at his offer list, North Carolina looks very lucrative. I mean, he's going June 15th. And then I believe the next week he's going to Orlando to, to check out central Florida. So I think he's a guy that, that really has a possibility to get one of those linebacker spots. If if, whatever they take staff takes. So, uh, yeah, they, they have Hamrick in hand, and we'll talk about whether or not they take a, another one. I think they will take another one in this class, even though it's a small class. Well, Xavier Simmons is another athlete I know that you've been impressed with and like a lot. Uh, six foot three, 215 pounds, three star kid out of Greensboro. He's the number 14 overall prospect in the state of North Carolina. So what do you, uh, what's the deal with Xavier Simmons in Carolina? And what do you like about him? I know, I know that you like his game a lot. He's in a part of the state that Mac wants to reclaim the Greensboro Piedmont triad, Virginia tech. It's always had really good luck. there getting kids from, from that part of the state. And so uh, he, he has great relationships with a lot of the, the kids, especially in the 21 class, like, Miles Murphy, Ra Ra, and Javari Ritzy. Uh, North Carolina's right up there. Uh, I know he likes state. He likes South Carolina. He likes Virginia Tech. He's got uh, Trey Turner, who played at Northwest, same high school he's from, and, you know, Virginia Tech. So he's kind of in his ear with Virginia Tech. But he's he came to the spring game. He, he liked what he saw, had a great time. He scheduled an official visit for, I believe, the the last weekend. Around, I think that's the 25th when there will be a lot of kids on campus. So, I mean, he's a kid that outside linebacker. He can play inside linebacker. He's got versatility to, to cover the whole field. 
Six three. Could you see him maybe morphing into that hybrid spot? Who knows with Jay Bateman? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, Jay. Ba everybody would love to be in Jay Bateman's mind <laughs> to 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 know what he has plans for for all these these uh, talented kids. Well, again, speed, athletic ability, sideline. I just think if they can go sideline to sideline, they can hit. And they're tough. Uh, Jay Bateman will be interested in him. Albert Red is a three-star kid, in-state kid as well from Kernersville, which UNC's had a little recent success in the Kernersville area, which is in between Greensboro and Winston Salem. Six foot three, two hundred fifteen pounds. We did a lot of stuff last summer on Albert. You actually had a couple of experiences where you ran him at a VTO camp and I believe another camp, and we probably ran three or four pieces on him in about a six-month period, but. Not as much over the last few months. So, so what is the latest with Albert Red and his relationship with the Tar Heels? Yeah, I believe Carolina was the, one of the first schools that offered him. So, uh, like, like we said, this uh, evaluation process they they did they went on mm -hmm. an offering. He was a former teammate of Javari Ritzi and, and Ra Ra Dilworth at Glenn. So, Tar Heels probably the staff saw a lot of him when they watched Ra Ra and uh, Javari play back in Seems Forever Ago, 2019. So, uh, but yeah, he, he, he's always liked Carolina, been very high on them. I know uh, East Carolina, Coastal, Louisville's also really been on him. But, you know, with the limited number, you know, we've discussed it that, Carolina's probably going to only have 14 spots, and they've already got four. So they, they're going – they're being really selective about, you know, who, who the, whose commitment they can take and everything. So, yeah, we haven't done much on Albert because I think maybe that's the case because there might be uh, a, a few targets maybe above him that they're hoping to land. So they, they're just – trying to, uh, you know, see what happens there. Yeah, and I think a lot of fans, the Carolina fans need to understand that whereas an Albert Red may have fit in a bigger class at a different time with maybe no more than 14, although we believe that they could be at 14 by the time fall camp starts, but they would make room for a couple of fives who are probably going to end up announcing sometime in the fall. They would figure out a way to make room for certain kids uh, but with COVID and the super seniors and just they, they, they've been so heavy transfer in the last couple, portal. transfer <laughs> portal, and, and they're going to have 50 freshmen, you know, redshirt or regular freshmen on the rosters coming season. There's just not a lot of space in this class. I think 23 will be a more typical class as far as the size goes. So, so with that being said, they've got Malachi Hammer again. I said a few minutes ago, I think that they'll take a second one and they're, they're going to bring in enough kids on official visits. They're obviously looking to probably take a second one. Do you think they hold it to linebackers? And if so, is the emphasis going to be more on someone who can play in the middle or someone who can just play all over the place? Well, that outside position, you know, with Bateman, the way he, I mean, the way he, he uses it, I think more emphasis should be on the inside linebacker. And that's where I, I like uh, Xavier Simmons. Uh, I, I, I think that. Mm -hmm that he would be really good in the, in a, the middle of the, the defensive unit. He seems like he would be a, 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 a heady player, kind of like a gimbal and everything. But who knows, they, they may like the athletic ability of a um, Deuce Caldwell, which I love the nickname. Could you see a Deuce Power and Raw Rod tandem, a trio out there? So – you would have you would have a the media would have a lot of fun with with that trio if that was supposed to happen. Absolutely. Well, to think about June first is just a few days away. Dead period's going to end. It's got to be so exciting for these kids to finally have a chance to see face to face with the coaches to get inside the facilities. These official visits are going to be off the charts. Coaches have to be excited too because. You know, in North Carolina, a big thing is the relationships. And a big thing is getting kids on campus because they have a natural cell that Mac has spoken about so often. So 
a lot's going to happen in June. A lot's going to happen in July. We think that they're going to get some pops in June for sure. And uh, the only way you're going to get the nitty gritty, the daily nuts and bolts about what's going on is if you go over to Tar Heel Illustrated for just $8.33 a month, become a premium member. You access everything Dina does. We don't do a ton of podcasts. We've been doing them in this series, but once everything rolls out June 1st, you're going to have to be on top of stuff with whatever Dina's posting in her dandies and the other threads. And if you're a Carolina basketball fan, David Sisk, Absolutely. He's going to be somewhere this weekend and he's going to be on top of it. We think there might be some pops of basketball in June as well. The only way to get the daily nitty gritty and what's going on is to be a member at THI. So that's the shameless plug. Got to pay the bills. If I'm sending David to Atlanta, got to go to pay for it, Dana. And you're going to be going to a bunch of camps too. You have one coming up this weekend in Durham and Chapel Hill, Carolina's going to have some camps. You got other camps going on. This is a busy, busy time of the, uh, of the year for you, but I know as draining as it can be that you absolutely love it. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a tough tough few months here. I'm trying to trying to keep up with this because it's like you turn around, there there's things going on, seven on seven camps, combines, and and now you're you're starting your your individual college camps where prospect camps and who knows? I, I'm looking forward. I really hope we have a showtime camp this year. I miss that. I do too. Yeah. And by the way, the ACC kickoff in Charlotte will be in person this year, and it's July 21st and 22nd. I believe that's less than two months away. Before you know it, we're going to be diving into the season as well. And you can access everything at THI, so head on over to TarHillIllustrated.com. Check us out if you haven't done it already. She's Dina. I'm AJ. Thanks for stopping by.